I'm standing on my porch, lit up by my porch light, and behind me is my van, which I just recently got out of the shop. For two months, it has been sitting at a mechanic shop getting some work done, and they finally got it back to me. Excited to have it back. I've also, in my hand, got my Leica Q2, and I thought for today's video, let's do a low light performance test on the Leica Q2. I recently did this exact same test on my Sony system to compare how the noise looks on the A7R5, the A7R4, and the A7R3. And I thought it would be fun to just see how Leica does once we start pushing the ISO up. So I'm gonna take some photos of my van this evening, some nice low light photos, and see how they look. So let's get some shots. I also just wanna add that I'm shooting at a crazy high ISO on the A7S III. So I'm really curious to see how this video looks. It probably looks like garbage, but here we go. So I got some photos of my van kind of all over the place with the ISO. I'm going to tell you every setting as we look at these images so you know what the ISO is. Just a quick note about my Q2 because I've gotten some messages asking me to clarify what this is because as you can see, it's green, but it has the color on the lens. And that is because this is not the reporter Q2. This is just the normal black Q2. But the person that owned it before me had put one of these green skins on it. And uh, I thought it just looked really sharp. So I left it on. So this is just a standard Q2. I just think it's beautiful with the skin on it. And I've never put skin on a camera, but now I kind of want to put this green on all my, on all my cameras. So. Okay, let's take a look at Lightroom. The first thing you're looking at here is the grid. And so you'll see there is a wide range of noise happening in these photos. And we're gonna start just by quickly looking through the info box. And so I shot this one first at 6400, but then I just kind of bailed on it and started shooting at 1600, 3200, 64, and then 12,000. 500. I went to 25,000 towards the end. Another thing that is important to note here is that I shot all of this using manual focus because the autofocus just really wasn't grabbing everything. And so I switched over to manual and shot most of these images in manual. But let's just take a look at uh, this one to start because this is one of the 1600. And one quick tip, if you're trying to see how much noise there actually is on your photo, just take your exposure up all the way and look at the dark parts. And so you can see right here, the noise that's in this Q2 file. Now, of course, we're never gonna see that noise whenever we edit this photo, but you can definitely see the noise on the Q2 file. And this is completely normal. So don't see all that and get discouraged thinking there's something wrong. There's not, that's completely normal. Okay, I'm gonna bring the exposure up, maybe like two stops, just make this image nice and bright. And uh, down here, my tone curve, just for this one quick edit, I'm just gonna do a couple of things that I talked about in my last video, because I just think it looks nice. I'm gonna put a little warmth in the shadows, just a little bit, a little purple in the highlights, just a touch. And yeah, I mean, this is not a bad place to start. And again, this isn't like, we're not trying to put a full styled edit on this, just more or less take a look at 
the noise. And so I think, let's go with this look. Here we go. That's the before, that's the after. You can definitely see the noise up here. One thing that I feel like is pretty consistent with the noise on the Leica is that it's very fine. It's like a very fine, not so dusty look. Like my Sony file, if you watch my Sony video, has a little more random noise pattern and what I would say are like dust speckles. Whereas this is a lot more sandy looking. It's very fine noise. You can see how much we are zoomed in here to where the lines are just not sharp at all anymore. And you start to see this noise, but for 1600, like this honestly is super clean in my opinion. Let's push this up. I'm gonna copy this edit. Let's take a look and let's go up uh, to 3200. Let me find one that I like at 3200. Let's do this interior photo. I'm gonna paste that edit on here. So this is at 3200, same edit paste it on and if you look you can definitely see we've got a lot of noise happening here one of the things that happened quite often in my last video were people were talking about well of course there's noise but when you use noise reduction it goes away and with high megapixel cameras you retain a lot of that info and that is true personally i am i don't use noise reduction a ton and get, this is just me. I try to shoot things kind of as they are and leave them as they are. I like to edit my photos when it comes to color and light, but I don't mess around with sharpening, noise. I don't mess around with that stuff too much. But you can definitely see noise reduction in Lightroom makes a pretty substantial difference on the Q2 file. I mean, if I was to... Okay, now this is a little plasticky looking, you know, I don't love that. But if I do put the noise reduction and start pulling it up, or even if I was to, to further define the noise reduction with the masking tool, I, that probably would make a bigger difference. But for the sake of what we're doing, we're not gonna use any noise reduction. We're just gonna leave this photo as is and, and just understand the noise that is created. And again, like if you look here, it is just very sandy. It's got a very fine noise pattern. And again, just understand that I've been shooting Sony for many years and I'm used to seeing what Sony noise looks like. This is much more fine, much more sandy. That's the word I'm just gonna keep using. It just has a different noise look to it. So that's that's 3200 and you can see it's pretty noisy at 3200, but let's, let's keep pushing it here and see what we can take this. This one is, 6400 i'm going to paste that exact edit on here and you can see on the histogram we're not even that bright on the exposure but let's take a look at the noise so this is 6400 and you start to see some of these lines in the noise which that happens on every system you get lines in it as you start to kind of pixel peep but if i'm zoomed out it's definitely very fine and we're losing a lot of contrast and a lot of detail here. Uh, this is, by the way, I have a bison skull in the back of my van. I love bison. And I thought a great way to honor the bison is to put a dead one skull in my van. Don't hate. By the way, I didn't kill this bison. Just wanna make that clear. But I did buy it off the guy that did. I bought the skull off the guy that did kill this bison. So again, you can see we are pretty, pretty substantially noised here at 6400. If I go down to the noise reduction and get an idea of maybe what we can do here and you can see, oh, that looks so plasticky, but you get an idea. I mean, it does make a difference if that's your thing. Okay, so 6400, let's keep pressing on here. Let's get up into the high ones. Now this is gonna be 12,500. Let's take a look and we'll paste my edit. And you can see this file has basically become unusable. Like I can't see a scenario where I would see this and say, I can work with this. <laughs> now in my last video on my Sony system asking who shoots at 12,800 ISO on these systems, like on the Sony R system or whatever, there was a comment that was like, well, a parent who's shooting a football game or a dance recital or whatever. And, and okay. There are cases where you might find yourself pushing ISO this high. But for me, I don't see a scenario where I'm shooting this high. And as you look at this photo, you can kind of understand why. Now, granted, this is low light. I wasn't paying too much attention to 
the shutter. I kept the aperture as low as possible. I got the shutter to where it exposed at zero and just used the ISO to really try to demonstrate what the noise looks like here. And even though this photo looks like a hot freaking mess, the noise is still very fine. This one, 25,000 paces edit on there. I mean, you get the idea. Like if I was taking this photo, if I, if I needed a photo of this, I think I would just use my iPhone, right? Like we can all agree when we look at this, this isn't really necessary. <laughs> like this isn't, this isn't something we, any of us would ever like look at and say, yeah, you know what? That, that's a good photo. That photo works for me. I'm not saying that. Noise reduction, yeah, we can save it some, but even noise <laughs> reduction, it's making it a hot mess. Okay, so what do you do when you shoot a high ISO on the Q2? And I'll tell you what you do. You turn this sucker black and white and just <laughs> turn the exposure down. Boom, art. This is art now. Black and white, high noise, looks grainy, art. Same thing here. You know what, black and white, this sucker, turn the exposure down, boom, art. You know what, we'll throw an Instagram filter, Instagram crop on it, here we go, art. We did it. If I found myself shooting super high ISO, I would just make everything black and white. That's me. As we've seen here, the Leica Q2 noise is very fine, very sandy. I think it might be the finest noise I've seen so I shot Canon for a long time, switched to Sony several years ago, and I just picked up the Q2 in the last few months. I don't think I've ever seen noise this fine, this grainy before. I think you can definitely style it, especially if you're a black and white shooter, you could probably style this a lot of different ways. I think the Q2 creates very acceptable photos for me, maybe up to 3200, but I would be hard pressed to push much further than that. It wouldn't be something that I would necessarily do. But again, you do what's right for you. I think it's very important to just remember that photography is an art and how you style is you. Please don't take my videos as the gospel truth. It's really just my observations, how I would shoot and my experiences. And if you have a different opinion, it's totally fine. And you're free to create your videos of your experiences as well and post them just like I am. These videos are meant to give you a look at what I believe is happening. And if you shoot maybe in a similar style that I shoot, I hope you find these videos helpful. So that was a quick look at how the noise looks on the Leica Q2. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you think this level of noise is good or acceptable. Also, if you think that maybe the Leica creates a, a sandy noise compared to other systems that that you might be familiar with, I would love a little affirmation on this. Maybe it's just me, but I definitely see a, you know what? Before we end this video, let's just, can we just do a quick comparison to a Sony file? I think I've got some Sony files on here that have a lot of noise. Let's take a look. Okay, I just pulled up a photo that I shot on my Sony at ISO 6400. It's of my cousin from Rome eating some s'mores at a campfire. He's probably going to kill me for showing this photo because it is not flattering. But let's let's just take a look and see what we think. So on the left is the photo I had of my van at 6400. Let's kind of punch in a little bit. On the right is an A7R4 at 6400. You can already see there's like a grid like pattern in the noise here. But let's let's punch in a little finer. I'm so sorry, Flavio. Forgive me. As I look at this, like take a look. Let's just punch it over. You see, you see how the Sony kind of has a dusty look to it. I talk about that in another video. Oh, I feel so bad that I'm doing this to him. But let's let's get in a little tighter here. Look at the difference in the Sony, okay, the Sony file, and the Leica. If I punch it in nice and far. And these aren't. Oh, it's 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 maybe not quite a fair comparison because these are different megapixels, different cameras. But let's just zoom in until we start to really see noise. And you can see that the Sony is very speckled, dusty looking and has this like grid pattern at 6400, whereas the Leica has a much more consistent and sandier look about it. So again, maybe it's just me, but I feel like that that is the gospel truth. Okay, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. One or two videos a week 
in the pipeline. So there's a lot more coming, especially if you're a Leica shooter on the Q2 system or a Sony shooter. That is 99% what I'm going to be talking about. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for following along and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.